She was the most amazing human being I have ever known because she was, she was simply with a capital H a human being. Somebody who, who lived not just for herself, who lived to do good. I would say she was a very courageous person because of what she was doing, what she decided to do in her wisdom, in her great wisdom, because she was a very wise person. She decided at a given moment that Jewish people in the ghetto need help. But to help everyone was an impossibility for her. She could not help everybody. So she started segregating who yes, who no, and that was not very nice. She didn't like that. So she decided that those who are the most vulnerable are the children, and that she's going to try her utmost to see if she can save as many as she possibly can. That's all. That was her mission. And that's what she did. And then she decided she heard about Jagota and she presented herself and said this is what she would like to do. And they put her in charge of the children's department. And she was in charge of the children. Jagota helped, of course, yes. Her aim is to take out as many children as possible, and young children, very young. Some were almost newly born. So that was a terrible thing. The crying, the shouting, the, this one wanted, the other one didn't want to allow. Um, the baby was crying. It, it, they were horrendous scenes. And these scenes she had in her, in her head in her head until the end of her life at the age of 98. She could not sleep nights because she heard the shouting and the screaming of the children, of the mother, of the, pa of the, of the grandmother. Of the it was horrendous. She said, on my own, I could not have done it. She had a lorry driver, she had an ambulance driver who knew what they were doing. It wasn't that they came here and that, no, they knew exactly and so. And these children were medicated, put to, put to sleep so that they shouldn't cry while the lorry or the ambulance is on its way out of the ghetto and the child was put in a box, in boxes with some holes in it. The child was asleep, babies, they were babies, asleep under, say, I don't know, coal or under a rubbish which they were taking out of the ghetto and so on and so And that's where she put these little, these little boxes and that's how they came out. And she contacted Ten of her closest, closest friends, put it this way, those who she took them, she took them, she asked them to come there. 
and she wanted to talk to them and ask whether they would be willing to do it and if anybody thinks they can't for any reason or that this is too much for them or uh, would they please say so because there is no shame in, in saying no, I, 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 not me, I can't, I'm, I'm too, too frightened, I, whatever. That's understandable, but those who think they can do it with me you do it with me my, on my own, I cannot do it. She, in her wisdom, decided that every, every single child will have his name, his original name, in other words, his Jewish name, and his present name. And she wrote everything on tiny, tiny tissues every child's name, this way, that way, on a tissue, into a bottle. And that's why she did it. Because, why did she do it? Because she was hoping that the children will survive. And hopefully, maybe the parents, or one parent, or, or if some family will survive. If a child will not, if we don't know their name from home, so to speak, we'll never know because the children by that time will have forgotten who they were. And this is why she did that. And once the bottle was full, she put it under a tree, not in her garden, but in a friend's, one of the, one of her uh, co-workers. And she invariably said, not only to me, but whenever and if anybody asked her, she said, on my own, I could not have done it. So here were my, my link to my thing. And we did it together. And then she mentioned some names. And in the middle of the night, she heard this name Gestapo. You could tell their, their wonderful boots on the, on, the, on the ground, on the floor, on the thing. And so she immediately, she had the names of the children, the, the little things were on the table because they were talking about it, discussing. She had it on the table. She grabbed all of that and gave it to the friend. And the friend put it under her arm. And the Gestapo on the door, and she opened the door. And she was in slippers, night wear and so on. And they did their whole place upside down. And there she was, and she was being tortured and she never divulged a single name. No one, and nowhere, nothing. And she was going to be executed. And the others were coming out of, of, in a lorry, in a lorry, they were going to Shucha, to, you know, to the main Gestapo. And the, um, the soldier standing guard there, or whoever was lo looking after them, so to speak, get out, 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 out. Not you. Not you. So she stayed behind, and she said, and now run. And how could she run when she was, she was tortured, she had no legs to, to run with her. But somehow she did run. And it transpired that Jagota bribed this particular guardsman. I never even thought, never gave a, never gave a, a thought to that person. Only having read it, like anybody else, that was that. And we were in Warsaw, we came to Warsaw on the way to Krakow. My husband died, and um, we had uh, an appointment. We were staying two days in Warsaw, and we had 
some appointments with friends to see some people there. And one of whom was my friend who is uh, for, in Krakow actually, based in Krakow, very correct, very so, absolutely everything on the thing, and punctual to uh, iota, to a second, you know. And here we are, and he's not here. It's not at all like him. He would have phoned, he would have something, but no, nothing, but something must have happened. We were terribly, terribly worried. Just under an hour, I think, he suddenly appears. I'm sorry, I apologize, I, I, and I couldn't do anything. I couldn't let you know, and I thought if I start calling, I better quickly rather get to you. So I said, tell me again, who, who did you see? Who was it that you are coming from, you said? He said, you know, Miss, you know Mrs. Sandler. I said, no, I don't know. Which Mrs. Sandler? No, you know, don't you know about Mrs. Sandler? I said, no, I don't know about Mrs. Sandler. But tell me, is that the lady who I might have read uh, something about in Bartoszewski's book? He said, yes, of course. She, to him it was normal, but to me, nothing. So I said, how come? She is alive? That's amazing. She must be very old. He said, yes, of course, she's very old. She's 92. I said, look, before you do anything, before we even sit down, I would like you to take your phone and call her and ask her if she would be so noble and allow me five minutes so that I may come, kiss her hand and leave. Nothing else, nothing else. When I walked in, to the room, she spread out her arms, not knowing me. And not I, but she took my hands. And I did not leave before three hours. She wouldn't let me go. Literally, from that moment on, that's how we were. That's how we were. On both sides. All of us very much would have wished for Mrs. Sandler to get a Nobel Prize, the Nobel Prize. I don't know if you know what it is. I will not explain to you now because we haven't the time, but it is the most important prize a person can get in their life. So your teacher will explain to you, but I will tell you something. She didn't get it, she did not get it. But you, children, are her Nobel Prize. This is what she said, and that is in inverted commas. This I quote. So long as I shall have an iota of energy in my body, I shall declare that only good is supreme. It must be striven for at all costs, and in the end, it must prevail. Those are her words.